Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Dal. And patch 1007 is finally upon us, launching later this evening after an extended maintenance over for the region of NA. This update brings with it the new zone of the Forbidden Reach, full of treasures, rares, new world events and a ton of old friendly catch-up benefits. We also got new heritage armors for the humans and the orcs, brand new recruiter friend updates, and of course a ton of new class adjustments, where a variety of different playstyles are seeing even more talent tree changes and improvements, as well as the famed Retribution Paladin revamp of the patch 1007. So in today's video I wanted to highlight all of the important class changes which will affect the way that your class will perform and end game content of this new build of Dragonflight. But right before that, most of you guys watching these videos are still not subscribed. However, the more of you are mine, the more of you do. So let's keep it going. Subscribe to the channel as well as hit the bell if you're watching these videos anyway. Especially if you're looking to get regular class and content updates for all the future Dragonflight builds. First we have the class of Death Knight, where we see both the DPS specs Frost and Unholy receive further talent tree improvements. First the spec of Frost, where we see talents like Remorseless Winter, the passive of Might of the Frozen Waste, which lets you specialize in two-handed combat, and Frost Reaper, which transforms obliterates into pure frost damage when empowered by killing machine procs, all have become Frost DK passives, which you will automatically learn during your leveling journey. Most of these talents end up being a staple of every build, but that can prevent meaningful choices and results in less build variety. This change allows for more leeway in the talent tree, which lets Death Knights better round out their playstyle and talent choices. We also gained a new talent of Fatal Fixation, which allows killing machines to stack up to two times. This results in better resource utilization in PvE situations, where you can now spend runes and runic power with more freedom, without the risk of overcapping on killing machine procs. And in PvP situations, this creates new windows of opportunity, where you can bank up two empowered obliterates and unleash them in rapid succession on unsuspecting targets, resulting in glorious burst situations. When using the talent of Obliteration, Soul Reaper will also grant Killing Machine procs, which could make this Execute talent a little bit more of a viable potential choice for Frost Death Knights in a patch 1007. Lastly, most Frost Death Knights find themselves overgenerating on Runic Power. To resolve this issue, two common Runic Power spenders like Breath of Sindragosa and Frost Strike will consume more Runic Power but will also be scaled up in damage, resulting in better resource consumption and better burst damage output. Next, we have the Unholy Death Knight, starting with new changes to their talent tree. The AoE talent of Epidemic has been moved around and is now much easier to access. We also saw a few undervalued talents receive a bit of a facelift. Talents like Rotten Touch has had its duration increased to 10 seconds, which allows for better Skirt Strike windows. Runic Mastery helps increase Runic Corruption value by up to 20%. Harbinger of Doom further increases the damage of Death Coil and Epidemic by 20% and 10% respectively. The file has gained a new functionality and will now grant you stacking mastery during combat up to 8% overall mastery in value. Also, you will now find the file in a different spot in the talent tree which moves all the way to the left hand side, away from Unholy Pact and no longer a talent choice node. The talent of Ruptured Viscera deals more damage, and Exploding Ghouls now have a chance of applying Festering Wounds to enemies caught in their radius. The talent of Feasting Strikes now has a chance to grant you Runic Corruption on top of its original effect. Finally, Commander of the Dead has been further updated to now more consistently empower your ghouls and gargoyles, to make sure that none of your summons lose out on the damage buff becoming a lot more consistent. Next we have the Vengeful class of the Demon Hunter, which only has seen a handful of changes. First, demons called forth by fodder to the flame will now spawn a little bit closer, and will be much easier to slay for vengeance tank demon hunters, which is a quality improvement. Having Demon Hunters see a buff to their eye beam ability with Blind Fury talent increasing the damage as well as duration of eye beam by up to 20%. We also saw talents swap positions, like Improved Fell Rush and Desperate Instincts together with Furious Throws as well as Fell Eruption. 
Up next, we get the class of Druid, which we're seeing a few adjustments. First, the class talent of Protector of the Pack has had its cap increased, able to store more damage and healing to increase its overall impact when the Protector buff is consumed. Feral Druids have recently found themselves super reliant on their burst cooldowns, resulting in lower damage outside of Berserk windows. To help alleviate this cooldown reliance, the damage is being spread out across abilities like Shred, Swipe, Brutal Slash, and Thrash, while reducing the damage of Berserk Frenzy to compensate. The Guardian Druid talent of Thorns of Iron has the potential to scale out of control, creating a playstyle where your best defense is also your best offense. This playstyle is seeing some limitations as of this week, where the damage is reduced beyond 4 stacks of Iron Fur. Restoration Druids are seeing new additions of talents in this update. The talent of Tranquil Mind will increase the rate at which Omen of Clarity activates and allows Omen to stack up an additional time. While the talent of Deep Focus, which you'll be familiar with if you played during the expansion of Shadowlands, will increase the effectiveness of Rake, Rip, Moonfire and Rejuvenation when they are active on a single target. Besides these changes, Restoration Druids will also find their talents have shifted positions in the talent tree, which will hopefully allow for better build variety. Next we have new updates to the class of the Evoker. Before we dive into the combat changes, Evokers will be able to learn a new flying skill of Aerial Halt, which allows them to slow down mid-flight so they can stick the landing more smoothly. First, all Evoker specs are seeing an update to their survivability. The talent of Draconic Legacy has been improved, increasing stamina by up to 6%. Foci of Life's healing will be much quicker, which leads to faster recovery. Ancient Flame that benefits from casting Emerald Blossom or Verdant Embrace. And for Devastation Evokers, Verdant Embrace is 35% more effective. Preservation Evokers are seeing some reductions of the Bronze abilities, with Temporal Anomaly Absorption being reduced by 20%. Resonating Sphere now applies one less echo to friendly targets that it passes through. Finally, Golden Hour, applied through a weaker version of Echo, will also be reduced to match the Echo value. But as the Bronze Talents get nerfed, the green side of the Evoker playstyle sees much needed improvements. The Talent of Ouroboros now gains its stacks from casting Echoes, increasing the healing of Emerald Blossom, with less stacks required to reach full value. Fluttering Seedlings has also been increased by 20%, which better supports Blossom-style builds. The class of Hunter is going through a major change in the patch 1007. The rare bow, which drops from Razagath from Vault of the Incarnates, has been a must-have item for quite a bit of time, which drastically improves most ranged Hunter's performance. The goal in 1007 is to pull back from the power of this bow to make it a less mandatory of an item as we slowly begin to head into the new raid in the patch 1001. Therefore, the bow has been downgraded to simply increase the auto attack damage of ranged hunter specs, but both Beast Mastery and Marksmanship see damage improvements to help compensate. Beast Mastery sees their kill commands buffed by 10%. Barb Shot improved by 12% and Cobra Shot increased by 50%. Kill Commands chance for more damage to cleave nearby targets when using the talent of Kill Cleave. Marksman gains 25% more damage to either Arcane Shots or Chimera Shots, with Multi Shots hitting for 50% more damage, as well as a talent swap between Steady Focus and Tactical Reload to allow for better talent flexibility. Next we have the class of Monk, where Mist Reavers continue to see further improvements in 1007 to make sure that this spec does not fall too far behind every other healer. Shaylun's gift healing is being improved by 20%, and its healing can now reach more allied targets. The lessons granted by Shaylun's gift will now be known by the Monk before you use the ability, which lets them plan and utilize the lesson buffs accordingly, maximizing their value. Though certain buffs like Lesson of Fear have seen nerfs, the lessons are being tuned around all four buffs being equally valuable, otherwise the mechanic can quickly turn into a fishing minigame, where Mistweavers are encouraged to keep rotating lesson buffs until they get the right one before even pulling the boss. Enveloping Breath Talent has been upgraded to Empowered Celestial, 
both Yulon, the Green Dragon, and Chiji, the Red Crane, will still channel enveloping breath on nearby allies, but can also protect them in a shield of Chi, making this cooldown's effectiveness a lot more immediate and reactive. Windwalkers can now choose between Sky Touch and Sky Reach. Both of these talents cause you to gain an increased critical strike chance against the target, but Sky Touch will allow your Tiger Palm to have a longer reach so you can strike your foes from safety, while Sky Reach will continue to rush you towards the enemy target. Windwalkers also see upgrades to their single target output, with Inner Peace increasing maximum energy while improving the damage of Tiger Palm. Rising Star damage has been slightly lowered, but Rising Sun Kick now gains a new crit damage interaction. Finally, Fela and Harmony's damage and healing bonus has been increased to 12%. The Casa Paladin has gone through a large number of changes in the patch 1007, and we've covered them on this channel in great detail. If you are a Paladin main that I highly recommend taking some time to re-familiarize yourself with the new class talents and spec talent changes. While Retribution saw the biggest revamps in this update, both Protection and Holy have seen some adjustments as well. The list of Paladin changes is numerous, but in this video I want to focus on the biggest highlights that you will want to know about. First, the base class has gained a new raid buff of Retribution Aura. All allies within your aura that take a threatening amount of damage inspire everyone within your aura, increasing their damage and healing by 5% for 10 seconds, with this passive occurring once every 30 seconds. This means the two paladins will be required in every raid. Usually, you will have a holy paladin to take advantage of the defensive value provided by Devotion Aura, and another paladin to empower your allies with the Retribution Aura. Paladins have also seen upgrades to their survivability, with Sanctified Plates increasing the armor, stamina, as well as reducing damage taken from group-wide raid mechanics. Using Ward of Glory can increase your armor by 20%. Using abilities like Crusader Strike, Hammer of the Righteous or Blessed Hammer will heal you for a portion of your health, while using abilities like Shield of the Righteous or Divine Storm will heal nearby allies. Paladins gain even more utility as Blessing of Freedom can now be shared with a party or a raid member, which increases yours and their movement speed by 30%. The Talent of Divine Toll has proven to be a popular choice for Paladins, and has been moved to the class tree to make it much easier to access. Also, Divine Steed has been taken off of the GCD, which will feel much better for Paladins struggling with mobility. Protection Paladins have seen a few talent changes, mostly with their capstone row completely adjusted. Eye of Tear can be further upgraded, increasing its damage by 300%, while reducing its cooldown by 25%. Holy Paladins regain Sanctified Wrath in their spec tree, if you prefer using the empowered version of Avenger's Wrath. Next we have the Retribution rework. While you still retain the familiar gameplay of building and spending Holy Power, the class itself will function a little bit differently, gaining new gameplay options and talents to fine-tune your playstyle. Crusader Strikes can become a powerful two-part combo, or instead replace your auto attacks. Crusader Strikes can also cleave up to four nearby enemies. You can gain a second Charge of Judgment, which can also cleave multiple targets and increase the value of your Holy Power finishers. Blade of Justice can also gain a second Charge, cleave large groups of enemies while leaving them with a powerful damage over time effect. Paladins can become the ultimate Crusader, a warrior who uses sword and light to smite their foes, transforming their attacks into a holy strike damage, which is a mix between holy and physical. This means that more of your abilities will utilize your mastery, though mastery value has also been adjusted to compensate. Holy strike damage can eventually build into an explosive divine arbiter, which unleashes the holy might upon all targets that stand before you. But Paladins could also become the ultimate Inquisitor, scorching the foes in the searing light, increasing the damage of periodic effects like Consecration, Blade of Justice, Wake of Ashes, and Divine Hammer, while increasing the value of all Radiant Damage, which is a mix of Holy and Fire. Radiant Damage can erupt, exploding on your foes with Sacred Fire, which gains more value against large groups of enemies. Paladins gain access to two defensives. Divine Protection will be learned naturally, while Shield of Vengeance can be talented in separately. 
Both of these defenses can be further upgraded in value, offering better combat protection. As of right now, it's difficult to tell just how well Paladins will perform in the patch 10 L7, because as of making of this video, we haven't really seen the final tuning numbers just yet. But it's safe to say that the Retribution is gaining a lot more gameplay options that will let them better fine-tune their playstyle to be able to emphasize different parts of their gameplay from sustained damage, cleave damage, burst damage, holy damage, and even fire damage, which will hopefully allow them to specialize in any form of endgame content. Next we have the spec of Holy Priest, which is set to gain even more talents improvements, starting with the Divine Image. Divine Image now has a guaranteed chance of spawning a friendly Naru when using a Holy Ward spell, instead of being a chance to spawn. These Naru will attempt to mimic your damage and healing abilities, capable of supporting your allies or scorching your foes. Having a guaranteed chance to spawn these friendly Naru in combat could make this talent a little bit more consistent. Lightwell healing has been increased by 40%. The talent now has a shorter cooldown of only 2 minutes and can be placed down instantly, making it much easier to use. The class of Shaman has seen a bit of an adjustment when it comes to their talent tree. First, the talent of Improved Lightning Bolt has proven to be a popular choice for most Shamans, becoming a mandatory talent node when it comes to endgame content. Because of its overall popularity, it has since been baked into the class as a passive which opens you up some more talent points to spend into the class tree. Many mobility talents have also been improved, like Go with the Flow as well as Thunderous Pause, which has a shorter cooldown of 20 seconds. Totem talents have also been adjusted, with Swirling Currents increasing the healing totem instead of the Shaman's healing abilities, while Poison Cleansing will be able to remove all poisons at once instead of just one poison at a time. Next, Restoration Shamans have seen a few changes to their spec tree. The talent Call of Thunder, a passive which increases lightning spell damage, has been made baseline, as well as Water Shield, which can now be activated from the spellbook without having to talent into. Healing Tide Totem can be further upgraded with two new talent choices, either with Current Control, which helps reduce the cooldown of Healing Tide by 30 seconds, or Tide Turner, increasing the totem's healing on low health targets, as well as increasing their healing taken from you for 4 seconds. Mana Tide can also be upgraded, either with Resonant Waters increasing its duration and radius, or Spirit Walker's Tidal Totem, which helps reduce the cast time and mana cost of healing waves and chain heal while the Mana Tide is active. The PvP talent of Tidebringer has also been moved into the talent tree, which allows for chain heal to be a faster cast during combat situations. The talent of Earthen Harmony has also been redesigned. Earthen Shield will now protect an ally, reducing their damage taken by up to 6%, while increasing the healing it does to that target by up to 100%. Improved Primordial Wave Talent further increases the value of Healing Wave, and Improved Earth Living Weapon increases Earth Living Heal by up to 40% on targets below as low as 35% of health. The final class on this PvE class list is the Warlock, as all three specs gain new talent choices in the class tree. Warlocks are losing quite a bit of underutilized talents, replaced with more impactful choices like Sargeri Technique, which increases the damage of filler spells such as Shadowbolt, Drain Soul, and Incinerate. Sarkrathar's Guile increases the damage of periodic effects like Agony, Immolate, and the Summons of Wild Imps. The capstone of Summon Soulkeeper grows 100% stronger, while the Inquisitor's Gaze grows 270% in value. The spec of Affliction has also gained new talent options, in place of underutilized choices. Dark Virtuosity will increase the Shadow Bolt and Drain Soul damage by up to 10%, while Kindle Malice increases Soul Shard Spenders like Malefic Rapture and Seed of Corruption by up to 8%. The talent of Summon Dark Glare has been changed a bit. The Demonic Inquisitor has become a lot more single target focused, with his eye beam scaling from plagues affecting one single target. This change allows the demon to scale better with smaller target counts and empowers talents like Grim Reach to be far more effective in AoE content. The summoner spec of demonology has also seen some talent changes to help bolster their demonic army. First, the talent of Reign of Tyranny will increase the damage done by your tyrant by 50% on top of its original effect. Next, we see more upgrades to your trusty Felguard. 
First, the talent of Guillotine has been increased by 200%, which makes your pet a lot more effective in AoE content. Felguards can also be upgraded with Immutable Hatred, which causes your Demonic Champion to be more effective against a singular enemy. The talent of Umbral Blaze has been added into the talent tree, which allows Hand of Gul'dan's a chance to burn the target for additional Shadow Flame damage. This talent can also synergize with Pact of the Imp Mother, which has a higher chance of casting additional Hands of Gul'dan. Finally, the talent of Stolen Power has a lower threshold when it comes to empowering your Shadow Bolts and Demon Bolts. Lastly, we have a handful of PvP specific changes in the patch 10.07. First of all, all major healing cooldowns are now 100% more effective inside of small group PvP content, specifically arenas. Abilities like the Druid Tranquility, Evoker's Rewind, Mistweaver's Revival, and Restoration Shaman's Healing Tide are now 100% more effective in rated arena content. Balanced Druid's talent of Stellar Flare now has a new dispel protection within PvP. Dispelling the ability causes Starburst to crash onto the Dispeller, doing a bit of damage while knocking him in the air. The Beast Mastery talent of Pierce and Fangs has a 40% reduced effectiveness in PvP, decreasing its burst potential. Lastly, Paladins are seeing the PvP reset for a good portion of their spells and abilities, likely because of the rework in the patch 10 L7, though it is possible we will see even more adjustments after the patch has officially went live. I want to thank all of you so much for watching this video and hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know all your thoughts in the comments below. As per usual, if you guys enjoyed this video or found it informative, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. I would very much appreciate it. And as always, in the description of every single live stream and video, we have a link to our Discord community channel. Probably the best place to reach out to me directly in case you want to let me know what you thought about this video or discuss with the other members of the community what you think about the upcoming changes. Join our Discord to become part of the community. But otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching. I do hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know your thoughts. And as always, I'll see all of you guys in another video.